What's up, everybody? So this is our last video of the week. Well, besides our questions on Friday. So if you have any more nutrition questions, nutrition questions, ask them on Blackboard, and I will get those uh, answered tomorrow at 11 a.m. So our last video is looking at motivation. How do you get motivation for exercising? Because sometimes it can be difficult. Make sure you ask any questions if you have them. Um, and let's switch over here. And so it turns out in order to have the best life, there's a rule and you're just going to have to exercise. Uh, it's just the unfortunate case that it is very hard to stay healthy, actually, if you're not exercising. Oh, and I got to fix one thing real quick. Going into night mode here on my computer. Sorry about this. All right, there we go. Screens turn yellow. When it happens, all right, let's just start over from the top. So welcome, tonight we are talking about motivation, how to stay motivated. And it turns out that you're gonna have to exercise to have your best life. So we need to find a way to do that so you don't hate it the whole time and find a way that you can actually incorporate it, incorporate it into your life so that you do have a good life. Because uh, some people, they just don't take care of themselves. They get too far down a path where you know, they haven't been taking care of themselves and then they uh, just have a harder time. So when you're thinking about uh, why you should exercise and how to get it going, um, you're going to have to figure it out. So some rules that we can go off of are uh, you want to try to think if there's a way that you can possibly enjoy it. So uh, are there some things that you could do? They might not be most ideal, like, you know, if you're trying to build muscle mass, Obviously, the weight room is the best, but if you hate the weight room, you're probably not going to go anyways. So is there some other way that you can enjoy exercise? Um, find a way to build it into your life, right? So let's say you're not going to exercise at all. Then maybe you need to find a way to commute to work. Um, if you you know enjoy riding bike or walking or whatever that is, uh, maybe you just need to do some hikes so that you can get outside and enjoy, with your, enjoy you know, being outside with your friends. So try to think of any way to enjoy it. Um, if you really hate it, but you enjoy playing basketball, you're going to have to try to make a schedule, right? And say, okay, we're going to play basketball. Oh, schedule at, you know, 3 p.m. on Saturday. Get your friends lined up. Make sure that happens because if nobody else is lining this up and you need to figure out a way to line that up, you're going to have to set some kind of schedule so that everybody gets together and hangs out. Otherwise, if you don't create a time or whatever, People are just going to lay around. Some people are going to get lazy. So try to set a time for something you can look forward to. Maybe it's spike ball. I'm a big fan of spike ball. So whatever you got to do, try and set some time with something you can look forward to. So let's say you have nothing to look forward to in terms of exercise. You just hate putting forth any ever effort whatsoever. In that case, you have to kind of negotiate with yourself. And this is a good skill to have negotiate and you want to think what is the minimum that I'm actually willing to do so when you're trying to actually get a routine started or a habit or actually get um, into the you know situation where you're exercising try to break it down into its smallest uh, component so let's say you you told yourself you were gonna go for a 30 minute run but you're not doing it and you don't have any motivation to okay well then you need to have a little conversation with yourself. So you need to say, okay, so you're not gonna run today, right? That's pretty clear. You're not gonna go out for your 30 minutes, you're being lazy, you're enjoying Netflix, and maybe you're not feeling too good about being on Netflix, but you really don't wanna go run, so you're just gonna deal with it. Well, then you can say, can you go for like a five minute walk, right? Maybe stop your episode, and, or you know, at the end of your episode, go for a five minute walk and then come back and then continue, right? So you're just gonna slowly create that habit and you know, maybe maybe five minutes is too much. You're like, nope, that's not worth it. Maybe it's one minute, right? And this is kind of laughable, but if you can just start training yourself to do something and in the smallest amount, so one minute walk, can you do that? Obviously, right? It's almost a joke, so people don't even do it. Well, go do a minute walk. You know, it might turn into a 10 minute walk, but half the battle is getting out the door or doing 10 push ups. Can you do 10 push ups, right? It can be. You want to make it almost laughably small so you can actually uh, get out the door and start doing some type of exercise. Um, another thing for negotiating with yourself is you can try to reward yourself. 
So you would like to wake up in the morning and go and exercise, but you are feeling lazy and when your alarm goes off, you're not actually getting up and out the door. Well, then you need to set some rules for yourself. So set a reward. You can get some Starbucks if you go to morning yoga or whatever you're trying to do. So uh, the trick to this though is if you set a reward like this and you don't go, you don't get up, well then you can't go get Starbucks afterwards because then you're gonna hack your system that you're actually using to try to reward yourself. So make sure you stick to this if you can and then you know go and enjoy yourself a little bit afterwards. So once you've done a good job, make sure you reward yourself. Sugar is a great reward. Our brains tend to like it. Um, so, you know, you're going to wake up and you're going to be laying in bed. You're going to say, okay, I want to wake up in the morning. I got to get there. Um, another thing to do is have a workout buddy. So sometimes we can't get up for ourselves to go exercise, but if you rope yourself into doing it with a friend, then you have two people to be accountable. So maybe on random days, one person isn't going to get up, but the other person is. They'll make sure the other person gets up. So, you know, just kind of a backup system for you there. Workout buddies are a good move. And then, I mean, we kind of talked about it here, but the important thing is that you're creating a habit because it takes, it takes six months or longer to actually create a habit. And once you have a habit ingrained into your system, then it's a lot easier to actually get out the door and exercise or whatever habit you've created. But before you have that habit created, it's, uh, not established so you have to like focus and actually put a lot of effort into getting out the door and exercising um, a good way to think about it is your brain is slowly forming to what you are doing so you have neuroelectrical um, electrical routes in your brain that are firing all over the place and as you do different things in your life like brushing your teeth or whatever it is you're establishing these same routes these neural networks that you always use and if you're exercising, you're also establishing one while you're exercising. If you haven't grown up exercising or you, you haven't developed that, um, that habit, you don't really have a good routine in your brain. So anytime you're going to exercise, you are going to be doing something that your brain is not used to doing. And so when you do start exercising, what you're trying to do is just create a neural pattern where, okay, this is what running looks like to your brain or you know, creating that habit so that you can actually, it'll make it easier. It'll almost become automatic a little bit. You'll start to feel weird if you don't exercise. So it takes about six months, and that's where this, um, asking yourself, what's the minimum amount that you could actually do and feel good about, right? So some days I don't feel like going to the weight room, but I still force myself to get up, go to the weight room. Uh, and some days I'll only do two lifts, right? But it's like, okay, I did something, wasn't great but I just at least maintain that habit of getting to the weight room. So try to create a habit, learn to negotiate with yourself because you are a person that you're gonna to need to negotiate with, find a reward, get a workout buddy, and then just remember you're gonna to have to exercise, unfortunately, if you want a good future life. And if you don't, well, um, in that case, you might be depressed and it turns out exercise is great for depression, but you know, Based on what we've learned already, you know all the negative effects of, it, of not exercising. And so um, try and get there, get out there, try and make it work. Uh, if you have to ask any questions, you can ask them on, well, if you haven't asked your question for the class yet, go ahead and ask anything you want, motivation-wise or physiology-wise. This is a fairly quick video. Um, while you get your questions out, I'm gonna go to one final thing. So sometimes staying healthy or uh, exercise in itself or maybe overcoming helping out your depression or something like that isn't quite enough for you to get out the door especially when you are depressed because uh, you know when you're depressed you don't feel like exercising another thing to do is just get out a journal and write down one thing that uh, you can look forward to in the future right uh, look forward And so for everybody, this is going to be different, but it's good to ask yourself this question and actually write something down. So uh, maybe, you, you know, we're young in this class, so maybe you are looking forward to um, graduating from BSU or maybe a backpacking trip or uh, some events, traveling, who knows what it is. Uh, write that thing down and that's maybe a reason to exercise. Maybe your significant other, right? Uh, maybe your wedding, right? That's a good reason to stay in shape. 
uh, as you get older you're gonna have grandkids and ideally you want to stay in shape while you're young that whole time so you have a, a longer life a healthier life uh, you know but once you get older maybe you want to stay around for your grandkill grandchildren so think about that try and write down one thing you can look forward to and yeah that is that is probably the best I can say for this you're gonna have to find a way to exercise so oh one more I think I mentioned this but try to find a way to enjoy it because it's gonna have to be your life so enjoy it negotiate reward yourself find a workout buddy create a habit and then write one thing to look forward to if it's if it's just not quite enough all right we got some questions coming in so let's look at those when building that routine would implementing different movements each day um, or would it be better to have one thing to do to build that routine like running every day uh, I would change it up personally so when I'm talking about those patterns in your brain if you're doing different activities that's going to be a different a different pattern in your brain but just the habit of getting outside and forcing yourself to do something that you don't want to do is going to help so you don't need to do the same thing every day and if you don't want to do the same thing every day then I would not do the same thing every day because you need to again just negotiate with yourself because you're not going to want to do things sometimes so good question uh, but teaching yourself to establish that habit I would call this discipline right although discipline is kind of a little out of style these days but if you can discipline yourself to do things that you don't want to do you're gonna be a lot farther ahead in the future if you can learn how to do this and you can do this really well with getting that reward so you have some kind of incentive all right how can you help how can you help motivate your partner to work out with you he usually wants to but he has always hated exercise and he used to like sports but we don't have equipment or access for that uh, that's a question and uh, that's a good question um, a lot of times people in relationships uh, there's one person who's exercising and there's not one person who's not exercising and this can lead to some problems because in a relationship you want both people to be taking care of themselves and so you might just have to have a, a tough conversation where you know you say hey uh, I really you know you want to start it out uh, the conversation out well like hey I really care about you and if we're gonna do this you know if this relationship is gonna keep going not you don't throw a threat out at them but you know I would like you to stay healthy throughout your life right because otherwise life is gonna be more difficult for both of you if you don't stay fit so find if there, think if there's some kind of activity that you guys can do together um, but yeah sometimes you need to have that talk like uh, especially when you get old and people you know you start to fall into ruts and you start uh, working a lot and then when you're working with lots of kids or whatever's going on you have a hard time finding motivation to exercise or time to exercise and you just really need to communicate with each other and have like an adult discussion not say like you know um, don't get offended if your partner is asking you know saying hey maybe you should start working out because you might need you to stay healthy and if you want to have a good relationship you both need to be able to communicate and say hey you know I think we need to start exercising together so that's a tough one um, it could be a walk but you're gonna have to find something um, I don't know your certain situation um, but yeah try to have a conversation about it and just say you, you know you're concerned and you're you do it out of a place of love right okay is hiking as effective as a workout as resistance training well depends what you're trying to do so uh, for health I would say yes and especially for cardio so you know uh, you don't always have to do the best type of exercise is my kind of takeaway if you like hiking but you hate lifting ideally if you're not doing either one develop your hiking habit first so you actually get the workout habit going and then you can maybe start sprinkling in some resistance training but uh, you know hiking is not as effective if you're trying to get your bench press up obviously so yeah um, good question though what are some things you personally look forward to oh uh, I like the mountains so I'm looking forward to summertime and getting into the mountains uh, what's the one that I'm trying to climb uh, it's out in the Trinity Mountains I don't believe it's Trinity Mountain but it might be it's the tallest one in the Trinity range so it's probably Trinity Mountain uh, it's maybe three hours three and a half hours east of Boise so um, that I look forward to I don't really like the weight room so uh, I force myself to go because I know it's good for me uh, but yeah all I want is the mountains to be open right now and I look forward to snow because I love snow sports but we're in an awkward time of year right now so okay I walk my dogs almost every day for three miles is that an effective way to stay in shape 
lose weight. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And you have an excuse. Your dogs love it too. So I'm a big fan of walking dogs for exercise, especially if you take them out on a longer walk. You get 30 minutes or longer, maybe an hour, and your dogs are loving that the whole time. So yeah, so uh, I don't recommend people buying a dog if they're not prepared for it. But buying a dog, if you do actually take care of it, is a great way to force yourself to exercise. And don't be mean, right? Take your dog out for walks because that's like your dog's favorite activity for the most part. Um, what are your favorite things to do when exercising outdoors? Uh, favorite things to do while exercising. So I like climbing mountains personally. Um, not too intense, right? Mostly hiking up mountains. Um, I'm getting a little into rock climbing. Uh, yeah, mostly just... Uh, Good, going as far or as high as I can in the mountains is my favorite. So, by how much should you build up your activity each time you stay motivated and feel good about what you do? By how much should you build up your activity? Oh, so, yeah, so how, how much should you ramp it up? I would say if you're having a good time, uh, keep going with it. But you can obviously get sore and go too hard. So, uh, that, that's kind of hard for me to answer. But... Um, how much should you build your activity up each time? I mean, if you're, let's say you're just doing a minute walk, right? And one of the things you can do is try to challenge yourself. So try to think, uh, again, you got to negotiate, but you can say, if you're not even walking a minute a day, right? You can say, well, what's wrong with me? Am I not able to walk a minute a day? And, and then you can say, well, let's prove to yourself that you can walk a minute a day for a week, let's say. So you get seven minutes that week. Is that possible? Could you handle that? And if you're not even able to do that, then you need to start, you know, questioning why don't I have the discipline to be able to walk one minute a day, right? And so at that point, you might get a little angry at yourself and that might actually help you get started. So that's what I would do. And then once you're outside and once you get exercising, it's, it's a lot easier to stay outside. The hardest part is putting your shoes on or getting a gym bag or whatever. So speaking of that, that is another good motivation tip. Get ready for your exercise the day before maybe and set a time to do it or determine what type you're going to do the day before. This is kind of where we talk about that schedule so that you have a time to actually go and do your thing. Okay, what is a great easy workout? Well, walks are great and easy. You could go for a longboard ride. You could go for a bike ride. You can play basketball. Um, I've showed some really simple like strength training plans. Let's go back here. Um, one, just to get started, if you, do, if you do lunges, so 10 lunges, maybe each side, 10 push-ups, uh, let's do 15 sit-ups, and 10 supermans. There you go. I gave you some cardio, and then this is just a quick strength workout. This will literally take you two minutes, maybe less, right? And if you're doing like a 10-minute walk every day and two minutes of this, you're gonna be a lot farther ahead than you would if you did nothing. So, and you can get pretty strong from doing something like this. Other people will do like 100 push-ups, 100 squats, uh, 100 sit-ups in a day. There's like a challenge going around. So you could do one of those. Um, and you know, you take your time to get to 100 push-ups. It's just in your full day, 100 squats in your day and 100 sit-ups. Those kind of challenges are really good because then you can have some type of goal to work towards. So that's what I would recommend there. Uh, what is bad? Is it bad to exercise most days for long hours? So you can over exercise. Um, yeah, so you can work too hard, but for the most part, most people aren't going to be doing that. Um, distance runners tend to do this or like type A personalities who get really involved in a type of activity. So Personally, I think you got to build up to it. So if you're exercising for five hours every single day, that's way too much. And in my opinion, you should take at least one day off a week just to recover and hang out and do whatever you want to do. At least one day, maybe two, um, maybe three even, maybe four. Uh, you know, you need to stack more exercise into those three days if you're taking four days off. Um, but yeah, you don't want to do, you know, if you're going out for a four-hour hike on the weekends, and then maybe a six hour hike, you know, maybe something like that. I wouldn't continue to do that all week, right? So you'll have built up a lot of time there. So you can just do maybe a 30 minute yoga session one day, and then maybe go lift some weights another day, lift weights two days that week, and then there you go. So yeah, you don't wanna overdo your exercise. Um, 
it can be it can wear you down and cause extra stress, reduce your immune function if you don't recover from your exercise. What are some rewards you give yourself for working out that keeps you motivated? Um, I give myself sugar. So I drink chocolate milk when I am done. That's my favorite. So uh, yeah, try to reward yourself in some way. And uh, sugar, whatever you like, you know. Um, for me, I just have a, I don't, I don't reward myself every time because I have the habit. So I just tell myself, you got to go exercise. And then I just force myself to do it. Like yesterday, I just did a 20 minute run and it was kind of, it was kind of nice, and then I ate afterwards, so I don't have any chocolate milk right now. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a good reward system for myself anymore. It's fairly intrinsically rewarding to me, and I just have to do it so I can force myself to do it because I've trained myself to do that. So, Okay, uh, how much should you increase your exercise each day when you're trying to build up that habit of exercising daily? Oh, yeah, so that's going to be... That's going to be highly individualistic. So we kind of talked about that. How much are you going to build up? You just got to negotiate with yourself. So ask yourself, you know, how much can you do? If you did one minute the next day, then can you do two minutes the next day, right? And it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, me, because I have a fairly high base of fitness, I can just jump into longer stuff. Sometimes you got to slowly start. So I don't have a great answer for that, but... Uh, yeah, whatever you can handle, and don't go too hard right away. Make it easy. Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm not going to exercise, and I do this too because I only have 30 minutes. It's like, well, go for 15 minutes then, whatever whatever it takes. So, Okay, uh, can bodyweight exercise be just as effective as using exercise equipment if you're looking to build and maintain muscle? Yes, so it's going to take more effort. Um, the typical building muscle rep range is 8 to 12, I would maybe extend that possibly up to 15 reps. And the key is that you're lifting heavy enough to where you can only lift this many reps. And so in the weight room, you're going to be able to lift more weight and do more damage to your muscles that way. But, I mean, uh, people get huge uh, just doing bodyweight workouts. Um, I'm Actually, I found like a YouTube video, a YouTube channel where this dude uh, was in prison for a long time. And he just talks about what prison life was, and he is jacked. And he's done most of his training in prison, right? So you can get very large, very swole, um, just doing doing workout routines at home. So you're just going to have to do more reps. That's what it's going to take. See if you can add weight in different ways. Uh, a backpack is a good thing you can do. You can do bicep curls with a backpack. You can throw it on your back and maybe do push-ups if you tighten those straps up. So there are ways to add weight and add difficulty at home. So... That's what I would suggest. Is it healthy to work out at night? Oh yeah, yeah, you can work out at any time. Uh, some people have a hard time going to bed after the, after they work out because it kind of riles you up a little bit. So if you can go to sleep and it doesn't impede your sleep schedule, then yeah, working out at night is fine and kind of nice sometimes. So I typically work out at night because I'm, I don't know, doing stuff in the morning. So okay, what do you think about two-day workouts like in weightlifting? Oh yeah, so if you're if you're working out quite um, intensely, well, you don't need to be. Uh, you can do two a days. When I was training for track and cross country in college, I did two a days. Typically, if it was me, I would do my lift in the morning and I would run at night. Uh, some people like to do, or you know, and I run. It's always running for me, but you know, you could do your cardio in the morning. You could uh, do your cardio at night, lift whenever you want. So two a days are good. Uh, yeah, I have nothing against two days. I think they're good. Theoretically, you should separate them by eight hours, uh, just for recovery time. But to be honest, it doesn't matter too much unless this is like if you're really working out super hard and really trying to push your limits. You should give yourself some recovery time in there. Okay. Oh, and maybe if you're if you're lifting weight two times a day, I would I would not do that if that's what your question is. So if you're lifting in the morning and then lifting again at night, unless you're really training for something intense. What I would do is I would just increase the intensity of one of those lifts, and then I would get full recovery afterwards. So when you're thinking about it, go hard and then go easy. So hard and then rest. Depends on, on your setup and your goals. How does over-exercising impact your immune system? So when you are exercising a lot, you're creating inflammation. And inflammation is kind of a signal that there's damage and that you need to recover. And your immune system helps with that. 
And if you're constantly stressing your immune system and your endocrine system, which is kind of like your hormonal system, because your hormonal system is responding to exercise and to that recovery, uh, you start to get fatigued. Sometimes they call it adrenal fatigue. And this happens, I've seen it a lot, and mostly because I study this is in uh, ultra running. So ultra runners, they'll get into this zone where they're just running all the time which I understand it can be addictive and exercise can be addictive. There are plenty of people out there who exercise way too much. And at some point your body just can't handle that workload anymore. Um, so some ways to know if you're getting overworked is if you measure your heart rate every morning before you get out of bed, you'll find what your resting heart rate is. If your resting heart rate, some morning you wake up and it's like 10 to 15 beats higher, this can be a sign that either you're getting sick or that you are uh, maybe not that you have adrenal fatigue, but that you're not recovering fully. So that can be a good indicator. The best indicator is getting a heart rate variability monitor. Uh, you can get one like your Apple Watches have them, I believe. They have chest straps. And what this is, is you have a vagus nerve in your heart, and this is what controls its cadence. And when you are tired and fatigued, your vagus nerve isn't responding very well to stimuli. Um, and so then your heart rate variability is decreased. So when you have high, it's called heart rate variability, that means you're recovered and you're ready to go. If you have low heart rate variability, that means you probably need a little bit more rest and a little bit more recovery time. So uh, I don't have a watch right now, but I plan on getting one soon. And yes, I am looking forward to measuring my heart rate variability as I get into the summer. So, okay, what else do we have? Is it bad to wear, say, a weighted vest plate while doing walks is a technically body armor, but someone I know wears it while walking his dog. Will it damage joints? Um, so personally, I'm not a fan of walking with a weighted vest. Uh, as far as joints go, it could. Uh, typically, joints are injured when people aren't uh, strong enough to actually carry the weight that they're carrying. So if he's like lifting weights, you know, quite hard and he's got a strong musculoskeletal system, he can probably support an additional 25 pounds. If somebody's training for a backpacking trip, that might be beneficial. Uh, personally, when I go out, I like to go fast, so I'm not trying to weigh myself down. And especially if you're going up and down hills, the, the extra weight downhill might be kind of rough on some people. So if you're training for something that carries weight, I recommend it. If you are strong enough to handle it, I recommend it. But other than, other than that, I think you're just working harder than you need to. You're kind of like not doing strength training and you're not, you are doing some cardio. You're just making your cardio a little bit more difficult. So uh, in my opinion, you're kind of in no man's land in terms of gains, but it doesn't really matter all the time. So my brain always thinks of what's the most efficient way to get the most benefits. But for a lot of people, it's like, what do you enjoy doing? If he enjoys walking in the weight vest, then... I would say go for it. You're, you're probably okay overall. And if if it can't take six months or longer to develop good habits, how long to break habits? Okay, so how long to break habits? How long until you lose a habit? I'm not actually sure on that question. I haven't looked at any brain studies to show when, when routines start to decrease. So I have no idea. If I had to guess, it might be somewhere around the same. Um, but yeah, they typically say six months to actually ingrain a habit in. So, uh, but yeah, I have no idea. All right, good questions. I will stick around for two more minutes if you guys have any more. But thanks for coming. And uh, I will be answering questions Friday, tomorrow at 11. If you have any more, I will be there online on this channel. See you guys later and have a good night.